Uh, you're watching Talking About. I'm John Griffith. I'm JC Alvarez. And we are joined by a very special guest with an inspiring story, Mr. Robert Brining. Welcome. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming and, and, and being a part of our show today. It's really great to have you here. I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> so, and, and you're a man of, I don't want to say it's, these days it's not unique circumstance, but you have, um, not to be intentionally punny, but you've turned a positive into a positive. Absolutely. <laughs> And you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Um, yeah, I was uh, diagnosed with HIV positive in 2001. Uh, I was going through a lot of stuff in my life trying to get clean off of drugs, and uh, my father was dying of cancer. So a lot of it was all within four months. And uh, after I was diagnosed, I logged on to the internet like everyone else does, and you know, Google HIV and AIDS and look for things. And I wanted to connect with people because when I went to the doctors, all I heard was this medical talk, you know what I mean, and, and statistics, and I was like, I don't want to hear that. I just want to talk to somebody who feels the pain that I feel. So I, I would join networks online, and I would be flirted with all the time and <laughs> feel like a piece of meat, and I was like, this isn't you know, what I'm looking for. I'm looking for friendships. I'm looking for support. I didn't have that, so I went ahead and created a social network for people you know, to come and, and find support. Now, that, that's an interesting, about turning, like John said, turning, turning a positive into a positive. Um, when you got the news, how, how old were you when you were diagnosed? I was uh, 21. Okay, so you're relatively young, and to sort of like find yourself in this unsupported situation must have been really very difficult. And, and I congratulate you on the courage to sort of like take that and say, hey, you know, I, I, I'm going to look out for help. I'm going to seek some help. And now you're providing a lot of help through hosting your own uh, podcast. It's right, right, right. We uh, started a... Uh, radio show, podcast, same thing, uh, you know, online for people as a medium for my members of the social network to connect. Uh, I felt that if you go outside and you walk down the street, you don't see advertising for AIDS awareness on billboards or things like that. So I felt like our voice was taken away from us. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give the voice back to the community and allow people to share stories. And it's also important to put a face and to identify. I, I mean, right. it's like it's so many people, especially young people, find themselves so isolated nowadays when they when they get their diagnosis that they've you know come out HIV positive and this sort of like now gives them a friend right you know provides them with a friend to go to and 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 certainly support that that's necessary so that's really great I mean it's like when how did you feel when when you were first told because I know that there, we probably have people out there who because know, I mean 21 yeah is a very young yeah. age you're coming out of an age when you feel you're invincible mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah because okay. yeah I knew everything there was to know in my teens, and, right. and then when I turned 25, I didn't know anything at all. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> you learn everything all over yeah. again. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was when I was first diagnosed, um, I kind of put it under the rug, mm -hmm. swept it under, and I didn't really think about it because I was dealing with my father, right. you know, passing away, and I was so worried about my mother and my sisters that it kind of let me put it into a denial stage mm -hmm. for like five years. So it took me five years to fully accept the HIV status before I went online and started publicly, t you know, sharing my story. Wow. So were you actively seeking treatment, though? Or um, yeah, I was going to the doctors, and, oh. you know, my counts were good, so I, you know. So it must be really brilliant now when, when you kind of, like, hear people in similar situations come up to you and say, hey, you, you had an impact on my life, and thank you for putting your voice out there. You know, it's right. so very necessary. And it's a voice of prevention mm -hmm. also because right, yeah. I think the, the prevention message is really getting lost these days. Mm, yes. Just because, yeah. because there are so many medical options that are available now mm -hmm. that are making it easier. Mm -hmm. Not easy, but easier. And I think people, especially young people in, in that state of inv invincibility, mm -hmm. yeah. think that, oh, you know, if it happens, I can just take a couple of pills and there's no, no right. real downside. Right. And, um, just through through my own circle of friends, I know that it, it's not that simple. It's not, and it's a shame because a lot of people think, oh, well, there's not a cure. They, people actually think there's a cure for it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And I'm amazed by the stupidity of people and how they're not educated. And you know, I strive to educate those people because they they need it. Yeah, so that's it, why I do what I do. It, it's surprising that even in our community, it's there really is very little information, and like John says, there is that sense of invulnerability. 
everyone still thinks that, you know, it, it, is, it is treatable and we can live long right. lives and, and, and so forth. And, you know, it's something that in our community we, can ha we treat with and handle with every day. Everyone has friends and, and, right. and community, but it's sort of The like information is out there. And I do want to uh, just let our mm -hmm. viewers know that we are live. Um, and we are taking phone calls at 718-460-9802. If you have a question for us or Robert, uh, we'd be more than happy to do our best to answer to the best of our ability. Oh. Now, have you ever on your show um, had someone who really was just on the brink of thinking that they could not go on with their diagnosis? Um, we have callers who call in. Most of my guests are usually okay with them, the, mm -hmm. their status to share it. Um, a lot of people call in and be like, um, I, was, I never told my mom and I've been positive for five years and now listening to your guest, I kind of want to call my mom now. Mm. And he literally called his mom after the show and came out, you know, as being positive. Mm. And she was like, oh, you should have told me. I would have been so supportive. You know what I mean? And he was like, you know, how do you tell your mom that you have something? So it was, it was it, it, it's good for me. It makes me feel good. It lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. Because not only are you providing um, that face and that voice of support, but do you also do uh, like provide information like like healthy lifestyle living and and maybe like active living? You know, do you do that? Uh, sort we have of thing different too? groups on the on the social network where there's like physical fitness and um, different things like that. Alternative med medication, mm -hmm. um, medical marijuana group. There's all different kinds of groups that are on there for people to connect with their special interests. Fantastic. Yeah. So, and and through through doing the show, when was when was the the show born? Um, in, I want to say, August of 2007 was when we first started it. Okay. And did you start it once a week? Yeah, I, I started it once a week uh, with my co-host Jeremy Dunn. Okay, and you've, have you, you've gone to twice a week? We did go to twice a week, but then we jumped back to, to okay. once a week because it was a little too much for me to find <laughs> so many people, you know what I mean? And actually, uh, Jack McEnroth from yeah. Project Runway okay. joined, and he's one of my co-hosts. Okay, and he's a friend of the show yeah. as well. So, um, well, for example, some of some of the the guests and topics and the information that you've gotten out there. I know we've had a little bit of overlap uh, with our show, so some of the names you name <laughs> are probably very familiar to to some of our viewers. But um, I know some of the ones uh, like Dr. Frank Spinelli was mm -hmm. on your show, yeah. right? Um, Jack was on my favorite, one of my favorite Angina, <laughs> um, <laughs> phenomenal um, person. She was on um, Richard Berkowitz, phenomenal okay. man. A lot of uh, history about, you know, the AIDS movement and how everything mm. started back then. So that was like one of my favorite interviews talking to him because it okay. was like it was like talking to somebody who's been around for so long and, and gives so much hope. And, and saw, saw the worst in the improvement because mm. I've known him for, for a good number of years and yeah, he's, he's seen too much mm -hmm. so, and, and he's, he's got some powerful stories to share. And yeah. Yeah. Now, now, if people want to see, if our audience is curious and hasn't seen your show, how can how can they log well, on to your? Uh, yeah, they it. can go to my website. It's www.pozim.com. Great, fantastic. Now you are living positively, living healthy, mm -hmm. and you also are in a solid relationship. Absolutely. And and how how has that has that impacted your life uh, between you and your partner? Uh, and absolutely. It, it, he. Uh, he gave me an awakening because he's in a very spiritual field in his mm -hmm. line of work and it allowed me to open up because I went to Catholic school so I was kind of really against everything you know <laughs> what I mean because I was taught that I was I don't know what you're talking about the hell <laughs> right. and so uh, he kind of gave me an awakening and allowed me to accept myself he was like one of the steps that I took so I was grateful to meet him fantastic yeah everything happens for a reason absolutely mm -hmm. and people are put in our lives for for certain reasons and there you go that's right right um, of all the stories that you've encountered mm. throughout doing the show and just sharing sharing your message, is there is there anyone in particular that that has really affected you? Yeah, um, Bob Bowers. Um, his website is One Tough Pirate. Uh, he's an amazing man. He. He's been living with the disease for about 28 years, and it's funny because actually 25. Um, I actually found him by Googling my first name, Bob, and HIV and AIDS, and his name came up. And I went to his website, and I was totally inspired. I mean, I would never tell my story, go on a radio show. I wasn't like that. I don't like talking in front of crowds or in front of people. I hate my voice. So, you know what I mean? I'm one of those people. And when I saw him, I was just like, well, if he can do it, you know, I can do it. And it was just, I just had this connection with him. It's kind of like he was my mentor. So he taught me a lot. Okay. And now you're sort of like paying forward because now you're, right. you're the name and face of a whole new generation and, and giving them inspiration. I try to. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely it's try to. It's good work. It's good work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 
also expanded. You're doing you're doing um, a blog now also. Yes, I do a blog on the body. Dot com um, that I just started this year in January, and it's uh, had a good reaction. I'm excited about it. Okay. I'm not a big blogger, so it's kind of, <laughs> you know, it's kind of uh, when the mood strikes. Yeah, so I, I started writing about a whole bunch of different things. It's really cool. It's like a sort of uh, daily diary. That uh, not daily, but like once a month, different things like starting meds, um, and then I talked about like HIV and reality TV, mm. and how there needs to be more of us cast it, mm. because when people think of HIV, they think of Philadelphia and Tom Hanks and yeah. we're going to die. Yeah. That's what yeah. everybody thinks of, and I'm here to give people hope to know that we're not going to die, that you can live a very long time on medication and still do things. Our dreams aren't infected, and I think that's the most important thing that I try to tell people, that you can still dream big. Mm -hmm. Very inspirational. Yes, and, well, where, where do you want to see it all go? Wow. <laughs> of course I love a TV show, who wouldn't? Um, but, but I think that I, I would love to be a part of a TV show that allows HIV positive people to tune in every week and get some hope. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing for us to tune into to be inspired by or to feel like, oh, I can really relate to them. Mm -hmm. So I think trying to find, do something like that um, would be really great. I also would like to expand the radio show into a station and have multiple hosts underneath me. So I think that would be something, you know, in the future. It's like a little yeah. Oprah. A little money. <laughs> Want to yeah. have your little Oprah empire there. <laughs> yeah. Every, everyone, I don't mind. <laughs> everyone's always thinking big. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and, and I'm sure that your, your network, will, network will grow and, and so forth just as, just as it's been growing. Yeah. Right. I mean, do, you, do you get any numbers of how many people are, are listening? Listening? Um, I know our show's been downloaded uh, 25,000 times. So, you know, that's pretty good <laughs> for yeah. me, I guess. You know, I'm happy yeah, with great. it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I when I put out a little email bulletin before before tonight's show, I got a lot of responses. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, great, cool. I'll be watching. Yeah. They're obviously not calling in, so seven one eight four six zero nine eight zero two. You know who you are. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, people people in the community and in in that segment of the community are listening and they are mm -hmm. aware. Um, you know, whether it's just um, even tuning in partially because uh, of somebody like Dr. Spinelli's on, and they they they, they follow um, you know, his book and and some of the things he's got to say, or or even just to to get viable information, or even just to listen silently and know that you're not alone. Right. Because just that is that is something that's key to yeah. to to the HIV segment yeah, of, of the community. Knowing, knowing is important. Yeah, Especially after you're newly diagnosed, mm. because that process of accepting it is the hardest part. Mm. It's the hardest part, and it, like I said, it took me five years, and it, it, it's different for everybody. It's individual, mm. so it may take somebody else less time because you know they're a little bit stronger than I was at the time. So you know, it's, that's what I try to work with the people who are newly diagnosed and moving them past that. Oh my God, I'm going to die. How do I tell people? How am I going to find a relationship? You know, is, am I ever going to be loved again? Mm. And I try to tell them that, yeah, you're going to be loved again, and you can find love, and, you know, mm. you just you got to give it to yourself first. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, do you, do you think that there's, well, or not a specific process, but a recommended process? Yeah, obviously, step one is finding the acceptance. And where do you, where do you, where do you guide people to go throughout, throughout the steps of, of acceptance and I don't know if picking up the pieces is is the right phrase, but keeping keeping it all together and moving forward. I try to tell them that it's it's okay to f feel like the world's over. Um, it's it's kind of tough because we do like group chats and stuff like that, so they're able to connect mm -hmm. um, with people every week, um, and that seems to be the best thing for people to do to move forward because some people will just sign up and not put a photo up, and that's okay. They can use a fake name, and that's mm -hmm. the best part about the internet. You know, you can be totally anonymous, and nobody knows. And they still get the information. They still sure. log in and they chat. And I think just having that connection with somebody else who's like them makes them feel so much better. Okay, and we do have a caller. So callers, say hello uh, whenever you're ready. Uh, feel free to ask your question. Hi. Hi, my name is Denise, and I really, it was really more of a comment. I just wanted to uh, tell him it's very admirable what he's um, doing. And, um, that people out here support people who have HIV, and that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Mm. Thanks, Denise. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Oops. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't nice. mean to cut you off. We <laughs> thought you were done, but uh, thank you for calling, Denise. And uh, we really love uh, hearing hearing uh, great comments like that, and and it's justified. 
I love getting comments. I mean, I had a lady who, uh, actually a father who emailed me t uh, after reading my blog, and he was like, you know, you really remind me of my son mm -hmm. who passed away, you know, like a, couple, a year ago, and, and it just it melted my heart because I don't have a dad. So I kind of had this connection with him because I felt, you know what I mean, we kind of, yeah. could relate so we yeah. we started talking and now we exchange emails all the time and those are the things that, mm. that make me that let me know that I'm doing the right thing and I'm really am helping people well because the stories are universal I mean it's, right. it's everyone always feels that you know, you're alone I mean just coming out right is hard enough as as is and you feel so isolated and alone um, just being gay and coming out imagine all, all, all of a sudden you have this sort of second coming out or, and for some people who are who are living with HIV, it, it's you know they think that they they don't have any support. And it's it's not necessarily just a second coming out. It's a coming out anytime mm. you you date someone or anytime you right. you want to take the relationship to an intimate level. Right. At least I would hope that that would be because it there are people. Be. There are people. <laughs> yeah, it should be. It should be. But it, there are people who don't, and hopefully they're learning to do that, or at the very least, being as safe as possible. Yeah, disclosure is real tough. Um, mm. I, I, I always tell people that I, I view my HIV status as a gift because it's weird. People, you know, they yell at me, you shouldn't be saying that on the radio to new people that are diagnosed. And I'm like, but ever since I was diagnosed, I've turned into this person that I've never been before. And I have like eyes and I can see things. And I realize that family's more important mm. than going out and partying at the bars. And you know what I mean? Sitting home and, and spending time with my partner is, is more rewarding than going out. <laughs> Just those things. It puts everything into perspective. Okay. And we do have another caller. Caller, whenever you're ready, please say hello. Hi. My name is Gilbert Martinez. I'm a case manager and uh, for the past 15 years. And I'm just calling us. Um, hopefully you have some listeners that, uh, may want to someday visit our center, which is the Ryan Inner Community Health Center on the Lower East Side, which we, pro we provide um, primary uh, HIV care. And um, Where can I, people find information about that? Uh, what, what's the website for your organization? Well, we have several websites. Um, I mean, sorry, we have several centers. Uh, we have one, uh, the William F. Ryan, Center, we're located on 97th Street. We have the Chelsea Clinton Center. They're located, I believe it's on uh, the 10th Avenue and 46th Street. Uh, my center, which I work from, is uh, Ryan Eno, which is located on the uh, 3rd Street, 279 East 3rd Street, between Avenue C and D. Okay, um, I'll tell you what, if you email me um, information, I'll put a link on our website. Uh, our email is the name of the show, talking about at AOL.com, and I'll get okay. those links up there. And this way, when people watch the show online, um, they can they can get to your centers. Sure. Okay. Again, talking about at AOL.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. I mean, there 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 are so many people who are act actively trying to make trying to make this better and trying to work toward prevention and trying to work toward services. And it's it called. I love the callers. I really love our callers. Seven one eight four six zero nine eight zero two. It's really great that um, that these you know organizations are going around because I've actually met so many people just from coming out, mm. and my friendships with those people are so much stronger than I've ever had with other people face to face. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's very interesting how something like being diagnosed HIV positive can really change your life in a good way. Yeah. And not you know. In a yeah, you, you've certainly you've certainly proven that. I try. Yeah. Right. I mean, a lot of people, it's forced them to get their, get their stuff together. Right. And those, those are the quote-unquote lucky ones. That, that it's, an, it's a wake-up call, and they get their stuff together. They take, their, you know, they take their meds on a regular basis. They follow their doctor's instructions. Uh, but, again, the key goal is prevention. I mean, there's, there's service and support if you are diagnosed, but prevention, prevention, prevention. And, yeah. I try so hard to stress that. Yeah, prevention is important because a lot of, you know, the the schools and all that they teach abstinence. Mm. And hello, kids are having sex at 13. Sure. Right. You know what I mean? You need to talk to your kids. It doesn't matter even if they're 12, you know, 10 years old, you can still talk to your kids. And that's the problem. I think a lot of parents aren't having that talk with their kids because they're embarrassed to talk about sex. Right. Okay. Again, where can find people? Uh, where can people find more information? People can find me at www.pazim.com. Okay. 
Thank you so much. You traveled. You traveled a, a few Philly. hours from Philly to 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 do our little show. We are very lucky. Yes, we are very lucky. So am I. Thank you. Thank you.